So the if the separated titty who's the buddy cop thing has a fucking man no cut dude what are you what the fuck are you listening? You're reading Playboy? Wait, what the You're reading another is that Carmen? Wait, Ooh, here's this I, from. I, I, wait, this is what are you You got a DVD of D of Bob? What the hell are you reading then? Wait, what the what is this? What is this? What language is what this? What is this, Italian porn? Majama. Welcome back once again, movie nerds, to another episode of Majama Jams. Mateo, Jason, and Matthew. And today, in the era of many would say an oversaturation of comic book movies, we are going back to the beginning for one you might not know, I'm as usual. Sure they know. One that I didn't know. <laughs> Some of you may. But as usual, it's coming from the Italian. This is Diabolic with a K. And I'm going to turn it over to you and let you introduce us All right. to this 60s comic book movie. Which is funny because everybody says Diabolic, but the actual name of the character is Diabolic. Diabolic, not Di Die. Not Diabolic. But I think first, I also thought it was Diabolique, I think, with that type of pronunciation. No, that, that's the, the French movie Diabolique is another thing. Sounds like a stripper. Yes. Um, by the way, Diabolique is a fantastic movie. Anyways, Diabolic or uh, Danger Diabolic. Right, excuse me. Is that the yeah. Italian pronunci pronunciation? Diabolic, yes, that's how it came up. The comic book was uh, born in uh, 1962, thanks to two very, very, very smart sisters, Angela and Luciana Giussani, actually Angela and Luciana Giussani, who came up with this size, is pocket size, is being like this since the 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 inception of um, uh, the comic book. What's the size make you think of? Um, Jump very specifically to me. Maybe Matteo knows. Disney Adventures magazine. When I look at this size, I think uh, immediately of uh, Disney Adventures magazine, which had comics in it with I think Donald and Mickey. But was that size? When did you ever get Disney we Adventures magazine? We never got Disney Adventures well, magazine. Well, we did, not I remember it. Fight, Thank you for fight, ruining my fight. Anecdote. fight. So you're saying this is the first time this specific size was used? Yes, and it's <clears throat> it's pretty much at least for, for a comic book. And uh, one of the reasons is that every single story is self-contained. When it came out, uh, there were the actual news vendors, uh, mostly at the train station. And people would go buy this, uh, read it on the train uh, as they were going to work, put it in the pocket if you haven't finished and you had something to read on the way back. It sounds cozy as hell. It was a huge success uh, from the beginning, even if it was the glorification of a villain, because Diabolic is uh, a thief. Not like Robin Hood, who steals from the rich to give to the poor, but he just steals from the rich, the end. The trailer calls him a bank, robbing, bank Robin Hood. Yes. Well, at the time, they didn't know exactly. Which what sounds like a rap line. Because the thing is that when Danger Diabolic, the American version, came out, the comic book was not popular. So the uh, easiest idea to give the idea of who he was and what he was doing was doing the comparing, uh, comparison with Robin Hood. 
And this was uh, just a little thrown off because of the English. This was an Ital full on Italian production. Entirely Italian. But it's just it was both shot and dubbed in English. The, yes, the movie similar were, to Wild Beasts. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. The movie came out uh, about eight years after the birth of the comic book, which this year has uh, is going to be turned sixty. And uh, it was uh, produced by Dino De Laurentiis uh, and shot uh, mostly in Italy and uh, Spain, if memory serves, which probably doesn't. And uh, the story, as uh, comic booky as it is, is that Diabolic is uh, a thief with his partner Eva Kant. And, uh, What's the last name? Kant. K A. Say one more time. And T. I know, I'm Italian. Oh. No, just keep saying her With life. an A, yes. Eva Kant. 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 Okay. Kant. <laughs> okay. Reminds I, me of that Kant Emmanuel and his... Yes. I'm not as smart enough to jump to whatever Emmanuel Kant was known for. I wish I was. What was he? He's a philosopher? Yes. Emmanuel Lewis? His last name was exactly like Eva Kant. Kant. Yes. Kant. I can't pronounce uh, Eva It Kant. sounds like an Austin Powers name. So which, for some reason, in, in Italy, they call it Eva Kent. But whatever. So... Pretty much, they are just like uh, capricious thieves. They see something, they take it. Uh, they already have, obviously, a lot of money because uh, he has a gigantic underground layer. Uh, he has a lot of uh, cars uh, and um, gadgets, at least uh, as the 60s went. So, at the beginning, he steals some money. Then he steals some emeralds. Meanwhile... Uh, Inspector Jinko, who is his nemesis, uh, historic nemesis from issue number one. His Joker, if you will. Yes, only uh, flip, because flip, Jinko yeah. is the good guy, is after him, but always one step back. Enters uh, Monsieur Valmont, who is another the gangster-ish kind of style, who pretty much tells uh, the inspector, if you ease off me, I can give you Diabolic. The inspector says, yes, uh, things don't go as planned, and um, Diabolic manages somehow to destroy all the taxes documents on Earth. So in order to... Yeah, I caught that part. There was like 10 buildings that blew up in a row. In view of the bad use to which the government has put the public money, I shall take steps to remove it from circulation. Signed. Diabolic. It's a joke. And we'll call his blood. Or ten plaques. Of yes, a tax credit tax. I like the end of Fight Club. Hashtag Fight Club ripped off di di Diabolic. <laughs> Diaper Diabolic. Diaper Diabolic, which is the later years when he's <laughs> yes cat burgling with people with a little but bit slipping out the back. After all, he is 60 now, so... Yes. Question. Go ahead. Sure. How did that one bomb trigger all the other bombs? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. I have no idea. Okay. And we, his, does his, the, was his pounding... No, I guess it's just like just it's for, for... Yes. Oh, well, that's, that seems not even fun to me anymore, then. I wanted his fist to be the detonator. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck was happening for the past hour and a half. By the way, I wanted his fist to be a detonator is the name of a porn I rented once. Since uh, they can't uh, exact taxes uh, and um, or any other liquidity, they decide uh, to melt this gigantic gold bar that it says is weighed 20 tons. Uh, Diabolic manages to steal that too, uh, brings it to his underground layer, and in the process of uh, melting it, uh, he gets entrapped into the liquid it's gold. A terrible smelting accident. <laughs> yes. And, Maybe uh, that's where it's from. I love gold. The look of it, the taste of it, the smell of it, the texture. I love gold so much that I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident. That's possible. Well, as we'll get into, I definitely see the... Um, yeah. My paper fainted. I definitely see the Austin influence, or as Matteo might correct me, the in like flint. May I see those, please? 
I'm sorry, sir. This doesn't permit you in this area. Oh. What I will say on a note to all that, and you guys will laugh at my dumb ass, as is usually my role here, but uh, I did not, and I was going to say, I give this movie respect because it's such great energy. I didn't really follow it, and I did not realize that they were blowing up taxes or taking a giant bar of gold to melt down in place of that. Uh, I just kind of went with the flow. I mean, there was very, I mean, uh, there was very little plot and things happening. Yes. It was pretty much just, okay, here's another thing he's going to steal. Well, either way. I mean, yes, it, it it goes pretty much from one high, mini heist to another mini heist to another yeah. mini heist. Also, I thought it was uh, much like a guy robbing Disney souvenirs who likes Mickey's girlfriend. A mini heist. Um, that was quick. Thanks. I'll give you that. Huh? Yes. Um, huh? I thought it was uh, interesting that they had the girlfriend kidnapped. What you would think would be the ending, um, uh, fight and. Uh, escape and rescue uh, rescuing and her b back. I thought the emerald halfway through scene the was going to be credits rolling. Yeah, and I couldn't really tell at that point how far okay, we had gone yes. through the the movie. I was totally expecting credits to roll, and he's placing the stolen emeralds on her chest. Yeah, so that's about the synopsis. Pretty much. I, I mean, the movie has uh, a clear. All right, what happened? <laughs> there was a guy. Yes. Oh, you, you saw it. There was the, a girl. The movie clearly has. Uh, an open ending, or at least that suggests uh, that there's gonna be a sequel. No question mark. Spoiler there. alert. Uh, yeah. Well, there we, was not. There's not. And also, as Matteo pointed out, which I think it should be said, is that um, this precedes *The Empire Strikes Back*, with both the idea of a main character frozen in something, here gold, there carbonite, and also the open, complete lack of completion ending. Yes, we with leave the, with, with Han still frozen. We leave with diabolic. Yep. I have to uh, overcome. Still. I have to overcome my English brain. Yes. Time. So I had an absolute blast with this. Good. I thought this was fantastic. Uh, I can't even tell you how enthralled I was with the stylistic nature of it. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations about tone. I remember we discussed it obsessively when plotting out bad CGI sharks because I always kept thinking how much the proper tone really welcomes you into a movie and keeps you there because we made the movie yes we did It's interesting going into this because... I was, yeah, well, tell us what you thought. I was almost going to ask today, wait, Mateo, is this known for being a genuinely good one, or is this one of those, like, kind of classics that are amazing because they're a shit show? I remember you telling me several times that uh, a Beastie Boys video, which we found out was Body Moving, uh, features both reinterpretations and classic scenes, Jack, Yes, they, they, they took uh, some of the scenes, like him climbing the tower, and then they replace... Uh, uh, th then it's, it's them, he's, he's uh, performing a heist on them uh, sleeping in this castle and right. things like that. So, uh, yes. so what I found so interesting was this movie seemed like if the Beastie Boys wanted to emulate its style in a cheeky way that kind of both paid homage to and goofed on it, this movie feels like that, where it would just to say it's this perfect line, and maybe the best way I can sum this up is the car green screen effect, which is less than perfect, and like I said, I know that I know this is a yeah. retroactive effect, but to me, that madly adds to the yeah. charm of the whole thing. And I know at the time it would, it, well, at the time it probably was a good effect. But you know what I'm saying? At the time it was the norm. It was so. the norm. But to me, the way this movie set itself up, the bad green screen in the car actually added to it in uh, even space. even worse. Uh, Diabolic is uh, talking on uh, from a phone booth, and which is clearly also uh, green screen but at a certain point there is a dramatic zoom on him and uh, the zoom works fine but the background doesn't change perspective but so see that's what i'm saying it comes across and i remember this all the way back from the youtube video robert rodriguez's 10 minute film school your mistakes become creative choices mm -hmm. and i feel like this is the perfect example of that because all that little stuff to me added to it 
everything about this tone worked for me. Everything about this tone worked. I don't even know what to start. The, the, the sets were fantastic from the opening scene of his crazy um, looking bat cave, if you will. Everything is uh, from the get-go is so exaggerated that you, you think, okay, I'm watching a comic book. I'm not watching a movie. I'm watching something. Yes. That is, uh, there is, uh, throughout the movie, as I was telling you, there, there are a lot of uh, framing uh, into frames. What, what else can you do? There are a lot of uh, shots that were either people in the foreground or in the background. They look like the lines of uh, uh, the, the panels of a comic book. Uh, choices of shots. There is the that one shot with the phone in the foreground, the, the woman moving in the mm -hmm. background, the other guy, and then the two heads that yes. enter at the last minute. Because a lot of these you can imagine as comic book panels, and like you're saying, they're, they're framed and set up that way versus literally putting a rectangle around these pictures, kind of like, um, I mean, a lot of people have done it, but I remember Ang Lee's Hulk. Hit him with the phone. Boy, contain the Double talk to Lee. Under control, General. I'll let you know if we need you. Unacceptable. Unseat your asses down there immediately. I want a full court evacuation now. I'm shutting you down. Lockdown. Didn't you hear what the General said? I said lockdown! Try to do that a lot, yes. with a, a lot of times that it actually creep encapsulated. Show. Creep, creep show. And in well, fantastic that... effect in Into the Spider-Verse also. News. The director is uh, Mario Bava, who has been uh, named uh, the Italian Hitchcock Ooh. by a group of uh, incompetents. No, <laughs> he was he was really good. And his son, uh, this is one of the rare cases where actually talent does run in the family because his son Lam Lamberto, who did work also in this movie, is uh, a wonderful director uh, in his own uh, merit. But this production was by Dino De Laurentiis, uh, who said, uh, uh, let's make this movie for the equivalent back then of uh, three million dollars and um, according to Mr. Bava's biographer, Bava was uh, so used to shoot movies on a shoestring doing all this uh, in-camera effects uh, and um, forced perspective and uh, that he made the movie for four hundred thousand dollars and gave back 2.6 million to Dino De Laurentiis who said immediately great we'll keep this for the sequel which it never concretized. Is that because of its popularity or lack thereof? I think that the uh, movie was misunderstood, if you will. And, uh, by American audiences? Also by Italian audiences. They, they did not know exactly what to make of it, honestly. It seems very straightforward. I'm, I'm sorry, Batman preceded it? Uh, two years. Two years. Yes. So it was. They, they didn't have the time series, to though. really catch up to the comics of Batman. Even it was fresh. No, because and especially because uh, way back when, since in Italy they dub everything, it would take about between six uh, months and what to one year for a movie to come out. Uh, Wait, you talking about the Batman movie or the series? Both. Oh, what year was the? Movie? I was gonna say how much of a gap between the series and the movie? Oh, the movie is um, uh, sixty-six, and the series also started almost immediately. Right after that. Oh, is it so. the series is post movie? Is that how it went? I believe so. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, damn, I never, had, I didn't, not know that. I thought I, I may be completely wrong. Uh, we'll find out here. Jason, tell us. There's hands in my face. Mm, yeah, no. That's the uh, answer. It, you just swapped it away. Oh. Yes. Oh, look, let's do a cool effect. Answer gone. You make it happen, not me. So. Batman comes out first in 1966. The series precedes it. This is hot on the tails. They shoot in 67. And both, well, Batman was kind of instantly popular. So it is weird that American audiences would kind of balk Batman at it. Batman was easily, was easily popular here. But, uh, and in Italy, it wasn't. And um, Diabolic, it, there were, it was uh, six years already on, uh, on the printed page. 
that uh, th that's why the movie doesn't even bother much to introduce who Eva Do it. Kent is. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> and and yes. Can we get more of that? Yes. Can we? You so don't have to tell. It's the 60th Spidey movie, and Uncle Ben's got to die again. Granted, they didn't do that with Holland, so once again, yes, no, no origin story for Tom Holland. I like seeing that. We've just concluded an executive meeting of the syndicate. We've taken a democratic vote. Five in favor of my plan, and three against it. I changed my vote. Don't shoot! Please! Please! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Since you said please, I won't shoot. Ah! Italy dubs virtually everything. Um, Even their own films? Yes. For their own audience. Some of the movies are rewritten in the dubbing uh, booth. They just they change uh, things. Who cares about the lip syncing? For instance, uh, Diabolic uh, was a play by um, uh, John Philip Law, who is uh, perfectly br cast. Brit I yeah, he is fantastic. Perfectly cast. I think he's right here. British, uh, or anyways, an uh, English speaking person. It's definitely white. Eva Kant is um, Marisa Mel, who was uh, from uh, Austria. Jinko was Michel Piccoli, a French actor, and uh, Valmont was Adolfo Celi, who was an Italian actor. None of them, except for jean Philippe Law, used his or her own voice in the movie. Neither in Italy nor... Well, in Italy, of course, Adolfo, Adolfo Celi dubbed himself, but in uh, the, the three leads were all dubbed. Despite them speaking English? Yes. Because... Reasons. Okay. We're a bunch of helpless jackasses. Also, speaking of dubbing, this is one thing that uh, I killed the, the tension, if you will, for me. There is one scene. I have to refer this one because it's too funny to me. There is one scene where Diabolic, in a clever disguise, goes uh, to the morgue to take uh, some ashes. Uh, of a body in which he hid some uh, emeralds. Hid? By loading them into a machine gun and firing <laughs> them into the gentleman? Yes. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> it does work. Where do you think you got it? How do you think you got them? <laughs> I didn't follow What were you watching, man? I got you, Diabolic. Come on out. Belmont! Don't play the hero! I followed, I was thinking when I'm watching it, I was actually, I was going to say it's such a compliment, like, it, it has such great energy, I had no idea what was going on, but I just... That's not a compliment at all, you weren't even co coherent during the... Oh, like, what? He shot the emeralds into a guy? That's fucking awesome! How That's do you think totally he... fucking rule! What did you think of what was happening in the scene with the... And he says... Cause of death. Eleven machine gun shots. Eleven emeralds. Eleven bullets. To the morgue! See, see, they don't tell you anything. Somebody might need to actually be told everything. I need the cliffs, though. I want you, American audiences you, are treated. This you way. know that Diabolic was the bad guy. He, he was. He you was you the, got that. He was a man, right? <laughs> yes. No, that honestly is a testament because I was just completely with it, and yet I was like, wait, I what, what is the highest? Why are they? What do they do? What do they? Talk what about is this thing? But I don't think it's coming across right, well. that way. So. The actor who plays uh, the doctor at the morgue uh, is uh, Italian actor Francesco Moulet, who I know, I know him somewhere. Who was, uh, of course, dubbed in the English version. He'll soon be home at last. He's in peace now. But in the Italian version, he dubbed himself. Finalmente ora ritornerà a casa e riposerà in pace. 
and uh, Mr. Moulet was uh, popular for one specific voice that he made through his life, which is this one. Stavo cercando delle scappatoie e ne ho trovata una così grande che ci staremo belli comodi tutti e due. <laughs> so his character, after the first three or four lines where he is actually in character, it just uh, slips into Yogi Bear immediately when he sees the emeralds and in, 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 in English he says, I'll say, or something like that, or did you see it? And in Italy he says, Smeraldi, ha visto? Like Yogi Bear. <laughs> How's about some emeralds inside this dead broad? I'd be interested to find out more about the character in the comic book mm -hmm. to see how fleshed out he is because if you really think about him in this film, he's pretty much just a blank canvas yes. of... And yet I thought that worked. Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, in its own right it did. I love but the if fact you really... that there was no, like you said, they don't introduce who this guy is. They don't introduce him. Let's just go. No, and not go. even that. Just the fact that there's nothing to him. Deepens him. Uh, not even deepens him. Like There's nothing defining about him really in terms of characteristics. Uh, characteristics, traits, mannerisms. I mean, maybe mannerisms. Well, that, I think that's a good example of what I'm saying because I do agree with that, and yet I didn't feel it suffered at all because of that. Uh, and like I said, I do... What was, it was an interesting choice, but yes. like, he doesn't have a personality, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, what was nice was when he tells him, I know how to like butcher girl, I know how to handle girls, your girl might look different when she gets back, and he says, I accept your terms. I felt that he was like... Okay, cool guy, thief, act dropped. I'm scared. Yes, I'll do it. Whether or not, I forget if he was kind of playing into their hair with that. But I, I appreciated the fact of how much they, like I said, they seemed like an actual passionate couple. He seemed like he had a reason to be scared and try to get her back. Yeah, uh, he, and he, he is genuinely in love with her. Yes. And, and again, vice versa. she was kind of a cunt to ask for those jewels. That's what fucked but her. her was last name. He should have known before he started dating her. Yeah. Sorry, w one last time. What was that last name? A little bit foreboding, don't you think? <laughs> You've been asleep for 20 hours. 20 hours? I slipped you a sleeping pill. Why? When you're not planning, I'm afraid you get restless. I'd rather have you sleep. And also, recently, they made another movie. Apparently the first one of a trilogy, even if he went, eh, with the audience. Uh, again, called Diabolic, I think. Not Danger. No. Danger. <laughs> danger with Robinson. <laughs> it was supposed to come out last, uh, I mean, two Decembers ago, but due to the man pandemic, they postponed it. How is it creatively? They say that it's very, very cold. It's, it's done based upon the third uh, issue of uh, the original series, where actually Eva gets introduced for the first time because in the first two issues, uh, Diabolic is a lone star. They try to do a comic book on screen. And uh, if you're doing a comic book that is almost 60 years old, uh, clearly there's going to be some problems in rhythm uh, and uh, in choices uh, and all of that. And so that didn't really fly with the audience. But it seems that they're gonna go with a sequel at least <clears throat> so we'll see we're a bunch of helpless jackasses well this has been fun yes so well, you know what time it is i need to leave we're gonna start over here we're gonna start with that. that's a lot of pressure oh um Mm -hmm. Go with one. Okay. Uh, like I said, a uh, little bit about the, you don't develop the character too much, but once again, like you said, that doesn't really hinder your interest in the film or him. Man of mystery. Yeah, okay. Um, Which is lacking sometimes with the over exposition nowadays. Yeah. 
So yeah. all in all, I don't have too many negatives to say about it. Um, it's very fun, classic spy sixties. Reminded me a lot of. Um, I'm sure where Danger Five pulled a lot of ideas. Yes, oh, I was going to say Thunderbirds. As yes, some Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds as well. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was actually going to do two, but I think I agree with you. Um, a blast in a lot of. Something moved. A blast in a lot of ways. Great art, great craftsmanship, great would-be camp, whether or not you view it that way. Yeah, I'm going to also go with one because, as we all laughed at my idiocy of not being there with what was happening, it didn't take me out at all. I was completely with it. I thought it was fun as hell. And um, the two leads I thought were great to follow around. Passionate Bonnie and Clyde's. Not bad to look at either, both of them. Flat tummies. One for me. All right, I will join you in the exact same uh, argumentation. Um, Rest augmentation. Yes, and uh, I don't get a breast of myself, but uh, yes, I, I I've always enjoyed this movie. And so. as a final note, feels fresh to me. Does not and feel. Yes. it feels fresh. It feels zippy. I almost feel like stuff I haven't seen before. Absolutely. So I go with one as well. Majama. Majama. So gang, thanks for joining us. And um we'll be back next time with lots more goodness. This from our movie Nerd Couch. We have to do this again? To yours. Oh yes. Now we're gonna stop after this and oh. Jesus Christ, thank God. Majama. Majama. The, the the mask of Diabolic, uh, even if it's uncredited in the movie for some strange reason, but uh, was made by none other than Carlo Rambaldi, the guy who Jesus. built King Kong. No, he didn't build Jesus. He built King Kong. He made the head of the Xenomorph in the first Alien. An extra testicle. And, uh, yes, E.T., the extra testicle. He which, made E.T. Which Spielberg said, does that have to be round? I said, oh, fine, I'll do it differently. <laughs> Make a little more like, dried up, could you? So here's what I'm thinking for E.T. <laughs> Look at this! I kind of shot at my grandfather's once, and I kind of just had it in my head as a vision. Stephen, uh, cr <laughs> critics over the years have been saying that E.T. actually resembles a flaccid elderly penis. That's exactly what I was going for. Not a lot of people know this. When I was seven years old, I was sneakily watching my grandpa in the shower. Stephen, I was actually just making a joke. This is actually not filming this part. <laughs> Um, having so, said so all he, that, and that he, image will always <laughs> be right here. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> and one day he, and this is again why the movie scene cracked. Oh my god! What happened? We had a little slip. Who? Let me see. Uh, it's as long as we keep it in as it happening, it's fine. Okay. That's is definitely it, a real pile of paper back there.